meeting of the Merrimack Planning Board for Tuesday, February 18th, 2020. Uh, let me go through the usual announcements and remind everybody who will address the board to be sure and sign in on the clipboard on the table in front of me. Make sure the microphone is turned on and speak clearly into it. Let me appoint Nelson into a voting position for as a substitute for Lynn. Um, our next planning board meeting after tonight is March 3rd, 2020 at 7 p.m. in this room. Um, that completes the usual call to order, and we are at the Planning and Zoning Administrator's report. Robert, is there any report tonight? Yeah, just one quick item. As the board may recall, they had, I guess, uh, established a uh, zoning amendment public hearing for March 17th. Uh, Director Thompson's told me he's got a conflict on that date and is asking the board to reschedule for April 7th, if that is all right. Mm, suits me fine if nobody else has any reason to object, and I guess it wouldn't matter right. if we did since it's a conflict and we wouldn't get our presentation <laughs> either way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, if there's no other items from the department, are there any questions by members of the board for the department? Seeing none, let's move on to our next agenda item, which is item three. Chestnut Hill Properties LLC is the applicant and owner. Review for consideration of an amendment to a previously approved cluster subdivision plan to allow for six additional lots, increasing the total number of lots from 71 to 77. The parcels are located at Captain Bannon Circle and Ritterbush Court, which are approved but not constructed roads. In the R1 Residential by Map District, Tax Map 5B, Lot 2, 5, 7, 8, 9-1 through 9-71. Case Planning Board 2020-5. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? No, I would just defer to Mr. Clinton to make the presentation. Excellent. Ken, good to see you again. But you. please introduce yourself as you uh, begin <coughs> the presentation and then tell us where we're at with the project. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. My name is Ken Clinton of Meridian Land Services on behalf of Chestnut Hill Properties in this application. And uh, we're here tonight seeking approval of an amended subdivision plan for Chestnut Hill for an additional six lots, which would change the originally approved from 71 to hopefully a new approved 77 lots. As most of you may recall, back in November of 2016, if you can believe it, uh, we received planning board approval for the 71 lot cluster subdivision, which had four open space lots served by public roads, and municipal water and sewer. A significant condition of that approval was the repair and, uh, and acceptance of some sewer issues that have been lingering for quite some time dating back to the construction of the uh, school, the middle school and the Madeline Bennett. Uh, since the approval, we have had some, some substantial difficulties in in getting uh, the project constructed due to that sewer and the conditions of approval. We've uh, quite frankly considered quite a few different options, um, how, to, how to fund that, how to possibly sell the project, how to work around, even considering individual leach fields as what, what if we had to go this way. Ultimately, um, nothing really has been working and, and the clock on the approvals have been ticking. Uh, in particular, state approvals, wetlands crossings, and alteration of terrain in particular. Uh, and so we're, we're at a point where we had to really uh, make something happen. And fortunately, um, recently this fall in November of 2019, the town um, and the owner of the property reached a, a memorandum of agreement where the owner of the property would pay for the sewer repairs, but the town would actually do the work. Um, so the town would, uh, upon receiving the funds, uh, be able to start construction, repair that sewer in a couple of sections, and then um, the rest of the project would be ensured that it could proceed as well. That, however, is predicated on approval of six additional lots within the subdivision because what was realized um, is that the cost of the original sewer dates back to 2011. Uh, a company called Wright Pierce prepared a report and estimated the needs of the repair, which then drove the costs at that time. Um, well, I can tell you, quite frankly, it, it's pretty much doubled since then. 
and so uh, that making the cost a, a substantial issue. So with the memo of understanding, if, um, if we were able to acquire six additional lots, it would therefore pay the difference, quite frankly, that in a nutshell. First thing we did after the memorandum of agreement was to file for and receive a variance because if you remember this is in the R1 zone by map uh, as it was not at the time of the zoning um, expected that sewer and water would reach this property. Uh, so we required a variance uh, which was received December 18th, 2019 for six additional lots which brings us before your board. Um, the plans that we filed basically are the same plans, same plan set as what was approved. Uh, the approach that we took was because the change or inclusion of six additional lots are nearly exclusively within the existing residential lots as previously approved, um, we didn't amend all 58 sheets yet of our plan set. So what we submitted was, I think, the first 11 or so plan sets within the, the set and upon um, hopeful approval, we can then apply changes in lot numbers and street numbers, which really would be the only changes to the rest of the sheets in the set. But it's necessary to make sure that the construction goes smoothly and the inspections and so on and so forth. Uh, none of the road design, stormwater, drainage, sewer, other utilities, none of that is changing. And it's not required to change. Uh, in our evaluation, the number of roofs and driveways add an insignificant amount of stormwater into the system and our factors of safety in our design will exceed and can handle that without any additional changes or permitting. So where are these six laws proposed? All on our cover sheet we have five shaded areas as I have on the screen. These are the areas I'll go and switch to a uh, separate detail. I've identified them uh, for my talking points, if you will, areas A through E. I just didn't mean to grab that, just a second. <coughs> Area A is first. Uh, this was previously lots one and two. One and two, is being converted in from two lots into four lots. Lots sizes range from 0.48 acres to 1.12 acres in this area. Again, uh, no change to the adjacent open space, no change to the road alignment or, or any of the road features. Area B, slightly different scenario. Uh, area B was actually part of a four acre open space not one of the two open spaces that are being conveyed to the town. It's being held again uh, in a fractional interest by the lot owners uh, and with covenants and restrictions against development. However, um, lot B, we had always seen that as a, as a potential spot because quite frankly it has a nice building area. Uh, its size, resulting size is 0.88 acres and the remainder of the open space that then flows down along Old Blood Road towards Madeline Bennett uh, is no longer four acres, it's 3.1 acres. The third area, area C, involves these three lots. What had been lots 41 and 42 now converts into three lots being 7.72 to 0.79 acres in size. Area D involves four original lots plus a tiny sliver 0.07 acres of what had been part of the internal open space, lot 5B7. 5B7 had been 17.1 acres of open space. Effectively, we're removing a tenth or 0.07 acres of that. So the, common, uh, the combination of a sliver of open space plus the four lots results in lots sizing from 0.47 acres to 0.86 acres in that group. And then lastly, all the way over to where what we call Ritterbush Court is on the corner uh, is what I labeled area E. There were three lots here that we converted into four lots. They were known as lots 20 through 22. Resulting sizes on those lots are 0.79 acres and 0.85 acres between that range. 
the reason why I'm sharing the acreage is, is so you have an understanding that we're not, we're, we were fortunate that some lots in the original subdivision had substantial enough size to absorb or fit in another lot here and there throughout the subdivision without resulting in um, extremely small lots. And by means of uh, comparison, um, you may know the Meadowwood subdivision in town, Jessica Lane and so on. Um, the minimum lot size there is 0.27 acres with sewer and water. The largest there is 0.71 acres. So our smallest is 0.47 as a result of this change. And we only have two of those, 0.47 and 0.48. Most of ours are in the, the 0.67 and 0.8 range, if not larger. Another comparison is Greenfield Farms. The smallest lot there is 0.25 acres, quarter of an acre. The largest lot there is 0.4, largest is 0.4 with sewer and water. And that's even smaller than uh, our smallest two lots. So when you realize what's been done in town with sewer and water, um, and we look at not only the previously approved plan, but even with addition of six extra lots in the subdivision with substantially larger lot size, which just goes to prove that these are not, with the addition of six extra lots, going to be small and burdensome lots to build upon. So that's really the, the purpose there. A uh, couple of other things that I wanted to share is that um, not only did we review engineering aspects of this design, but we also took a look at traffic uh, just to ensure that six extra lots is, um, from our traffic engineer's perspective, extremely inconsequential and does not add any traffic or safety concerns to the health, safety, and welfare of the general public. So we made sure to at least close that loop uh, in case there was a concern on that. Uh, with that said, obviously we received staff memo. Uh, we generally agree with all the statements and most of the recommended <coughs> conditions. However, however I will uh, touch on the notes. Um, this is a bit of a unique circumstance. Uh, we've, in my office and over the course of my career, we've had amended subdivisions in the past. Uh, typically, they may not be this uh, detailed in this complex with this many notes. I personally felt that there was a need for some consistency and clarity about the notes that were part of and incorporated with the original approval. That's why I separated and distinguished any new notes under the amended notes section. And instead of having the notes read one, two, three, four, and so on, I chose letters so the amended notes have A, B, C, D, and E. Um, I felt it was important to carry the consistency of the previously approved notes into this amended plan and then only try to focus on the five notes that reflected the current changes. So somebody could come to the Registry of Deeds, get this plan, see all of the notes that were part of the original approval, and then focus on the five notes, maybe six after this meeting, um, of what has changed and be able to focus on what's changed and be very clear and concise. Um, Robert and I haven't had a chance to talk about um, each of our views from the staff standpoint or my standpoint. Um, I'm sure if we were to uh, discuss this if the board was so willing to grant conditional approval and Robert and I had a chance to sit down and talk about it we could reach a resolution if you felt that was reasonable administratively I'd welcome that opportunity um, I've have a couple of options in my head perhaps that might work and satisfy some of his concerns but uh, I see it as a very minor item and quite frankly if he was insistent I would just defer to what his request was um, but we can uh, see how this moves along. So with that said, I find it to be a fairly simple matter. Uh, when I first was asked to look into this, I equated this as a basically a, a five area lot line adjustment because I really feel that's effectively what it is. But technically, it's part of a larger subdivision. This is the best method. The amended subdivision plan is the best method and means to do it. Again, our entire 58 plan set 58 sheet plan set would be resubmitted with all the proper lot numbers and street numbers because 
unfortunately, you slip in one lot at the very beginning, and lot two is no longer lot two, and lot three is no longer. So we have to just go through a, a, a drafting exercise, if you will, to renumber everything. So if uh, staff or inspectors out on site with the plan and profile sheets, and they're in front of a lot, it's the correct lot number that they're referencing, is not something from the previous approval that could cause confusion. So, uh, with that said, I don't want to belabor this anymore. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions from you <coughs> or anybody in the audience. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you entertain a point of order, please? Yes, please. Do you have enough for a quorum? We do. Okay. Mr. Chairman, because the town council has a agreement with the developer and with my presence being here, potentially a possible conflict of, uh, of interest as it relates to that particular agreement, uh, because you do have a quorum, I will be recusing myself. Thank you, Bill. Um, Ken, thank you for your presentation. And uh, just to cover a couple of procedural items, um, we are uh, not obligated to take up the question of completeness as this is an amendment to a previously approved subdivision. Um, you've requested no waivers as a part of this amendment. Um, I do have a question about previously granted waivers, if there were any, just to be reminded of them. Um, and then um, the other uh, procedural comment is that um, to the extent there should be or could be discussion about the number of lots, since the ZBA has granted a density waiver to permit 77 lots, um, that particular question is not uh, before the planning board. Um, we're looking at whether you meet the subdivision regulations, presuming that 77 is the amount that the ZBA has given to you. Um, with that, Remind me of uh, waivers that existed before and whether they were granted, if there were any. Yes. Uh, I've <coughs> zoomed into note number 13, and it notes that we had four waivers granted um, relative to road grades, side slope for the roads, and a section of sidewalk. So those were uh, note 13 granted on 6 2 of 2015. So on the fourth waiver regarding sidewalks, it looks like we uh, uh, waived a portion of them, but I assume that there will be some sidewalks in this. Remind me what that. Yeah, the the section of sidewalk that we sought the waiver was over a wetland crossing, at the very uh, entrance, the southerly entrance off of Old Blood Road. Uh, with the height of the road at that point and the side slopes required, any additional width. Uh, for a sidewalk that would go down to a road without a sidewalk was going to increase the wetland impact to, to agree that we already had a fair amount of square footage in those impacts and DES was looking for us to reduce them. Uh, so given the fact that the internal loop and all the way down to Madeline Bennett uh, the, to the school would be having would have sidewalks that was granted by the board I think is a, a reasonable amount of sidewalks for the project. Thank you for reminding me of that as you went through it. I remember the uh, very detailed explanation of vernal pools and various turtles and salamanders and things Correct. that were there and the changes in the slopes that would be necessary, side slopes if we had widened the road to allow a sidewalk there and how that would create some headaches. So thank you for reminding me about that. I am glad that most of the subdivision will have sidewalks available to it um, built in there. Um, I think one of the points that you've made is that other than dividing up some of the existing lots in a little bit different way or perhaps this one additional lot in area B um, it's um, not terribly different than the things that we have seen before my simple response is no uh, to for, for most people to look at this uh, look at this plan and look at this cover sheet versus the other one I had to side by side compare you, them. I was like looking back and forth you between here. You truly wouldn't notice it, and uh, and again, when we had created these lots, we we knew that they were larger than most sewer and water lots in town, but it also seemed to to fit. So I'm I'm very pleased with how these five areas absorbed six extra lots. It it was uh, it worked out very well. Other members of the board have comments or questions about the presentation that's been made, and ultimately we have to open up the floor to a public hearing at some point and find out if we've got any other uh, butters or citizens. Mm -hmm. But Nelson, 
Yeah, Bob, the first thing I'd like to hear is a little discussion between the applicant and Bob regarding this note situation. Um, why do we want him to consolidate the notes? What he said made sense to me to separate them, but maybe you've got some other reasons I didn't see. So Tim approached me with the concern when he was putting the memo together, and I agreed with him that without hearing from the applicant when we were doing the report, uh, we thought it was kind of a confusing approach when just taking a look at it. Saying, well, there's these two sets of notes on here. Hearing Ken say it tonight, I think, lends some credence to why he did it that way. And I, I agree with him if the board is okay with it. Uh, if you were to conditionally approve this, that we could kind of talk it out administratively and uh, kind of work, uh, put, put together a package of notes uh, that makes sense for everybody. Okay, what he said made sense to me, to separate yes. them. And I, I agree with that, but I don't want to also step on Tim's toes as the author of the memo uh, by changing the way and agreeing to something, because I know he, he was concerned about the layout when he first looked at it. So I, I, I don't want to just say, oh, no, well, Ken explained it, and it's all fine. I'd, I'd like to get his input uh, as yeah. part of the A conditional yeah. approval process. Yeah. Okay, otherwise, uh, I think he's answered my questions about the rest of the, the rest of the plan, which isn't here before us tonight, but uh, administratively, you'll have a lot of detail to go through when the new plans come out, because there's a lot of, a lot of pages get changed, right? And um, the sidewalks, I'm glad to hear they're untouched, so that was a concern for me. and. Um, Oh, I, one more question. The, this sewer line that we're rebuilding here, is this line sized to carry all of this plus the Madeline Bennett School, or not the, the middle school, and whatever else is foreseen in that neighborhood? Is that pipe big enough? Are we doing the right thing here? Yeah. One answer, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the, the the design of the sewer main in the existing public roads of Babusick Lake Road, and then even yeah. though Madeline Bennett's not accepted by the town yet, um, that was pre-sized back when um, the school was being designed as a main for this area of town. Now you're talking so, you're talking the Madeline Bennett line the, in Babusick Lake Road in Madeline Bennett. Oh, both. Okay, that's what I wanted to be sure yeah. that the line in Madeline Bennett has the yeah. capacity yeah. we're not and actually that's part of our original um, approval process through the sewer department yeah as well as the state of new hampshire yeah uh, so yes it, it's okay more than can handle what All we're right. proposing okay. so to be clear process wise i can't I, I don't mean to obsess about process um but so the board knows what we're doing and i'll say it out loud to make sure everybody else thinks that's what we're doing too the original approval that we did a couple of years ago required the off-site improvement of the sewer um, to be carried by the applicant. Since the applicant's now got a apparent agreement with the town council to handle that sewer differently, our vote here essentially excludes that off-site improvement from this Correct. site, this subdivision approval. So that is a, an amendment of something that was required in the old approval would not be required in the new approval because it's being handled in a different way through the administration uh, from the town council. And I don't have any complaints about the way it's been handled. I think it's a perfectly fine way to deal with it. But we should know that one of our previously required conditions of approval was this repair that is no longer going to be a condition of approval because it's going to be dealt with separately. Does everybody, applicant, agree with that? That's yes. ex exactly what we're doing? OK, good. Um, other comments or questions about it? Because it's not necessarily part of our approval, mm -hmm. it's interesting to know about it, but um, it's excluded. So, okay. um, Except for the stuff that's internal to the cluster subdivision and in their roads. Other comments or questions? Any a butter or interested citizen want to weigh in on the proposed amendment? Going once, going twice, if there's none. Um, no? Come, no? Um, if there are no public uh, comments about this, um, then it is appropriate for the board to either continue to debate with the client, with the uh, uh, applicant, or um, 
uh, consider what final action the board might be willing to take. Robert. Uh, Tim, fortunately, is watching the meeting online, and uh, he heard the notes discussion, and his statements are that uh, he believes they should be revised as recommended because he feels the plan set, uh, since it's being recording, it needs to be able to stand on its own, and as a result of that, he would like to stand firm on his recommendation. What was the last thing you said? I didn't hear you. He wants the plan set notes to be revised as he recommends as in he his recommended. memo. Okay. <coughs> I understand both points of view, and I think that having one unified set of notes without sort of wondering whether there's a hierarchy and one controls over the other probably does make some sense. Um, plus, it seems like not the hill to die on. So, get her done. Um, are there other uh, comments or questions of the applicant? Uh, if not, is the, the board prepared to take final action? Oh, I'm sorry, Nelson, I didn't see your hand up. Oh, okay, well, I was just gonna make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Please do. Uh, to, uh, I think the motion will be to uh, accept the proposed changes to the uh, uh, Chestnut Hill properties plan reflecting the agreement between the town and the uh, applicant and uh, showing the changes of the, in the number of lots uh, adding seven from 71 to 77 and uh, so my attention is called to the staff's memo which says that the potential motion will yeah. be to grant conditional final approval of yeah. the application okay. with the following precedent conditions to be filled within six months of signing, et cetera. And that probably does encapsulate some of those other Thank things you. that That's you mentioned. Better than the way I phrased <laughs> it. Yeah. So it is, is there a second for that motion to grant conditional final approval? Second by Mr. Chair. Second by Paul. If there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? So 400, the amendment passes uh, subject to the conditions in the staff memo. And uh, on that note provision, you guys can work that detail out, although it seems like maybe we already have. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you for the creative approach to the subdivision that allows the town to cure a septic uh, uh, line problem um, that was not created through any of your effort. Um, but was um, required in order to provide service to your subdivision. So um, right. it's, it's a good solution to have that kind of cooperative effort. Anything well, else that you need from us tonight? No, no, thank you very much, appreciate it, and thanks for coming out in the poor weather. Glad to do it. It's actually, the rain's not so bad now that it's not slippery at least. It's not. It's not slippery. The oh. sidewalk is slippery. The slippery <laughs> sidewalk out there is lethal. Uh, well, anyway, okay. not to worry. We anyway. were happy to do it for you, Ken. All right, item four on our agenda is discussion and possible action regarding other items of concern. Does anyone have any discussion items? Um, just a quickie, Mr. Chairman. I was bored out of my good, so I read all about this three-man sort of commission that's being established by our worthy friends in Concord that will have the ability to override anything we say or do. Um, I mean, obviously, if our worthy friends in Concord say we're going to have it, we're going to have it. Um, I'm worried about it, and I'm wondering whether we can at some point in time have some detailed instruction what it really going to mean, because it strikes me that if we really don't like something and dig our toes in, the developer can go up to these three men, give them each $10,000, and they'll get away <laughs> with it. I don't think they quite will work that way, but... Um. Well, so it's the this, way I believe things work. Yeah. In, 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 anyway, this, that's yeah, this bit of legislation was um, uh, uh, initiated last term uh, in January of 2019, and it fumbled around and ended up getting jammed into the state's budget as it was adopted. Um, and there's still some sense that there may be a, a way to remove it or some amendment to that that may do away with it, but who knows how that'll play out. As, as of now, um, it it exists. comes into effect on June the 1st. It exists. Um, it only deals with the questions about workforce housing, though. 
Um, it's oh, not, okay. dealing, not commercial site plans and not subdivisions that are not related to, to uh, workforce thank housing. Thank you for the clarification. Um, it does allow the board, that board in Concord, to hear appeals in the way that the court would with some limited jurisdiction and some expertise. Um, the board is supposed to be constituted of a, uh, of a lawyer um, who somehow has practiced in um, subdivision and land use development, but is not currently practicing in that field, so they wouldn't have a conflict of interest. Also an engineer that somehow magically has experience in subdivisions and land use, but is not currently doing so anymore. Um, Maybe that's maybe those are retired people. I don't know. And I think the third one was a judge or some a retired judge. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to find these unicorns that are going to mm -hmm. fit this requirement on the board. Where yeah. and you know that, that want to work twenty hours a week for the state to do this. Hence my comment about yeah, but the money. But anyway, I think there's there's plenty of ways the thing was misguided and and all of that. But it is what it is. Um, I, I didn't support it. Our firm, my firm, privately testified against it because we thought it was dumb. Um, it seems to have some support from places like the BIA that think that developers are being limited in their ability across the state to develop properties because of obstinate boards which make appealable decisions but the cost of appeal and the time to go through an appeal is so burdensome that it ends up essentially blocking permanently some proposed subdivisions to come forward. Um, I think that it would so rarely affect us because I don't know the last time that we took a subdivision of some substance and turned it down. Um, we shape them, we am amend them, they get the sidewalk done a little bit differently, you squeeze in an extra lot on the end, and I, so okay. when, when are we gonna be appealed into that? Now, um, it does allow any affected person, and that was one of the stupidities of this regulation, was that an abutter opposing a project can use this as a sword as well. Um, because they didn't draft it properly, um, and I, you know they shouldn't have drafted it so that it was just one one side can appeal to this board and the other side can't. But uh, it'll be a sword as often as it is a shield, I think. But, okay, thank you, sir. I, but good, good to notice it, and I'm glad that you did. I thought it was a terribly uh, worded concept. It wasn't functional. It costs money. If you want the court to go faster, change the law so the court can go faster. Um, or cheaper or whatever. Fix the court system. Don't create little private administrative agencies that act as little. That's what I was whatever. very concerned about. That mm -hmm. Effectively, we are being, it could be overruled by a, a triumvirate of people who supposedly know something about it, but could be perhaps persuaded, hence by comment on money. Um, anyway, uh, let me just leave it at that, but I appreciate what you've explained yeah. to us. I, I have little doubt that the ethics department of the state wouldn't allow someone to be taking bribes from these kinds of things, but... Oh, God. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh dear. <laughs> well, after have having just, having just heard do. about the, the legislator in Massachusetts who took, I don't know how many million dollars for his girlfriend, I, I hesitate to disagree with you on that. You know, Massachusetts is a bit of a different state. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's got a little different approach to it. We are uh, we don't even pay our legislators a salary, much less uh, try to. Anyway, um, I, I think it is a concern. I think the world would be better off if the thing found a way to go die somewhere. But if it, it, uh, at the other side of the spectrum, as to Merrimack itself, probably won't mean a whole lot. No. Um, for other communities that are a little more constrained on their development or a little bit more. Um, unfocused at reasoning through their decisions, um, they may find it to be a bit of a headache because it's intended to take boards that are making irrational decisions and um, prod them into um, considering a different approach because of a relatively easy appeal. Okay. I'm not sure how easy it'll be though because you're still going to come with lawyers and arguments and plans and engineers and 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 traffic guys and the whole rest of it it's not going to be cheap but oh, whatever any other discussion on items i don't see any um we have the minutes of february 4th 2020 in our package what do you think of that mr jim i'd like to make a motion that we accept the minutes as printed is there a second i will second a uh, motion and a second i don't have any comments on the minutes of february 4th if all are no other comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Four zero zero to approve the minutes. 
Um, that concludes the business on our agenda, and I we are set to make a motion to adjourn the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Second by Nelson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? We are adjourned. Thank you very much for the work, and don't forget to turn the microphones off.